Hi, my name is Annalise Bolt. I am currently taking sports medicine at South Tall High School, and today I will be discussing UCL tears in the process of Tommy John surgery. Tommy John surgery is usually performed on those who suffer from a torn ulnar collateral ligament, or UCL for short. UCL tears are often caused by repeating throwing motions and overuse, which makes it commonly found in baseball players, especially pitchers. These repeated throwing motions cause the UCL fibers to stretch and fray, which then leads to the development of micro tears and eventually a complete rupture of the UCL. UCL tears can also be caused by landing on an outstretched arm, however, repeated use is the most common cause. The symptoms of UCL tears include pain and swelling in the elbow, specifically the inner elbow, elbow stiffness or inability to fully extend the arm, contusion on the site of injury, tingling in the hand, or weak grip. Patients may also hear a pop noise when the UCL is ruptured and will have extreme trouble throwing and using their arm after injury occurs. When the UCL is torn, surgery is not required. However, it is highly recommended for those who want a chance to save their pitching and baseball career. Tommy John surgery was developed by Dr. Frank Job in 1974 for former MLB pitcher Tommy John. Before the surgery was developed, Tommy John's injury was career-ending and he had a 1 in 100 chance of returning to sport. However, Dr. Job's surgery was extremely successful and revolutionized medicine. Tommy John was able to fully recover after 18 months of rehab and was able to throw even harder than he could pre-injury making his baseball career last much longer than anyone expected. Tommy John surgery is performed by using a grafted tendon to replace the torn ligament. The graft is usually harvested from the palmaris longus tendon from the forearm, big toe extensor tendon, or hamstring tendon. A three to four inch incision is made on the outside of the elbow and all of the damaged tissues are removed. To reinforce structure, the surgeon might attach scraps of the original ligament to the graft. To attach the grafted ligament, holes are drilled into the ulna and humerus, and the new ligament is threaded through the holes in a figure eight pattern and is secured by sutures, buttons, or screws. With all surgeries, there are many risks and benefits, and Tommy John surgery is no exception. Some risks include stretching or rupture of the new ligament requiring a second surgery, temporary or permanent neuropathy, inability to fully extend the elbow, or chronic pain when throwing. Some benefits of the surgery include pain relief, restoration of elbow function, and the recovery of an athlete's career. In fact, one third of MLB players would have suffered career-ending injuries if the surgery didn't exist. Rehab and recovery after receiving Tommy John surgery typically lasts anywhere from six months to a year and happens in four phases. The first phase is known as the immediate post-operative phase, which usually lasts about three weeks. The goals for this phase are to protect the healing tissue, decrease pain and inflammation, delay muscular atrophy, and protect the graft site by allowing healing. The first week post-injury is spent in a posterior splint with the elbow bent at 90 degrees. During week one, the patient works on assistive range of motion and performs exercises such as gripping exercises, wrist range of motion, supination and pronation, shoulder isometrics without shoulder internal rotation, and biceps isometrics. During week two, the brace is adjusted to 30 degrees to 100 degrees. Exercises for week two include elbow range of motion in the brace, initiating isometric elbow extension, initiating wrist isometrics, and initiating light scar mobilization over the distal graft incision, as well as continuing exercises from week one. At the end of phase one during the third week, the brace is adjusted from 15 degrees to 110 degrees and is gradually increased five degrees extension and 10 degrees flexion per week after this point. Exercises for week three include initiating light wrist flexion stretching and initiating assistive shoulder range of motion, which include exercises such as full can, lateral raises, and external and internal rotation tubing. Phase two, known as the intermediate phase, 
begins on week four and usually lasts till week eight. The goals for this phase include gradual increase in range of motion, promoting healing of repaired tissue, and regaining and improving muscular strength. Exercises for week four include beginning light resistance exercises, such as wrist curls and wrist extension, pronation and supination, and elbow extension and flexion. Week four also includes emphasizing rotator cuff and scapular strengthening while avoiding external rotation and initiating shoulder strengthening with light dumbbells. These exercises should be continued into week five. However, dumbbell weight should increase by one number for week five. During week six, the brace should be removed and the elbow should range from zero to 145 degrees. Exercises for week six include elbow strengthening exercises, shoulder external rotation strengthening, and initiating the thrower's 10 program, which works out the major muscles necessary for pitching and throwing in baseball, as well as any other throwing sport. In week seven, the patient should continue the thrower's 10 program and begin to incorporate weights. They should also initiate light proprioceptive neuromuscular facilitation diagonal pattern. At eight weeks, the advanced strengthening phase begins and usually lasts till 14 weeks. The goals for this phase include increasing strength, power, endurance, and maintaining full elbow range of motion while gradually initiating sporting activities. Weeks 8 through 10 focus on plyometrics. Exercises include initiating eccentric elbow flexion and extension, continuing the thrower's 10 program, and beginning plyometric drills including chest passing and side throwing. Weeks 12 through 14 focus on strengthening and beginning sport-like activities. Exercises include seated bench press, lat pull down, initiating golf and swimming, and initiating an interval hitting program. At 14 weeks, the final phase begins. The return to activity phase lasts until the patient is fully recovered and returned to sport. It typically lasts until 32 weeks post-surgery. The goals during this phase include increasing strength, power, and endurance of upper extremity musculature, and a gradual return to sports activities. At week 14, exercises should include continuing strengthening elbow and wrist strength and flexibility exercises, maintaining full elbow range of motion, initiating one hand plyometric throwing, also known as stationary throws, initiating one hand wall dribbles, and initiating one hand baseball throws onto a wall. Weeks 16 through 24 focus on throwing and include completing both phases of the interval throwing program. The last couple of weeks are spent focusing on returning to sport gradually and by little at a time until the patient is completely recovered. Many baseball players find themselves wanting to get the Tommy John surgery because it is rumored to give players higher pitching velocity. However, this rumor is highly misunderstood. Many analysts will compare a pitcher's post-surgical velocity to their velocity on the day of their injury. Because UCL tears happen progressively over time, the ligament was already worn out the day of injury. This means that the surgery cannot increase a pitcher's velocity. It can restore a pitcher's velocity back to how it was before the UCL began to wear out and tear. Overall, Tommy John surgery can completely restore an athlete's elbow and has helped extend many athletes' careers. Thank you for watching.